Welcome back to Educator.com. We're now going to take a look at some CSS3 proprietary prefix examples, which is a bit of a mouthful. But what I want to show you or explain to you is an issue with CSS3 and also the proprietary prefixes you may have to use when working in CSS3 because of browsers. So let's take a look at what's going on. Right now I have this proprietary CSS page open and this is located within the chapter 20 files and I have defined a new local site called CSS3 with these new files. So if you don't have the chapter 20 files, make sure you go down to the exercise files tab and get those because there are some new files in there for this section. Now I'm going to turn on live view and you'll see we have a rather interesting box here. This box is using CSS3 properties and the specific properties are including prefixed properties. So I'll show you those in a minute. But the properties are we have this drop shadow that CSS is actually creating for us. This is not an image like we've always had to do in the past. So it's a very exciting having CSS3 available. Not only do we have a drop shadow, but we also have some rounded corners. And I'll move out of Live View and put this into Google Chrome. And we'll take a look at it there. You can see we also have a gradient being applied. Now we have that being applied in Chrome, but let's take a look at it in Firefox and see what happens. You can see Firefox is working without an issue. Let's take a look at Safari. And this is the Windows version of Safari, and you can see it works just fine. We'll take a look at IE8, and guess what? This is a very old browser. It does pull in the drop shadow piece, but it doesn't use the rounded corners or the gradient, but it still looks okay in the older version of IE. What has happened within this code? If I go up into code view and let me close this up so you can see a little bit more. What we actually have, and it's within this area here. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. What we have here is quite a bit of information for you about some of these different CSS3 properties. But what's interesting is they have this little piece added in front of them. So this is a zero dash. This is, as you can see, a dash Moz, a dash WebKit, and a dash MS for Microsoft. What's happened is those are known as prefixes. And within this area, we also have these down here. Now you can see those prefixes do start with a zero. So this one, or I should say they should start with a dash, and my O does not, so I should be adding that to correct that issue. I don't have Opera on my system, so I can't go out and show you that that wasn't working. But Opera may support this one. Notice this is the exact same thing all the way down. It's just adding this prefix in front of it. The idea is this linear gradient has not been supported. That's supposed to be the CSS3 property. But in order to get it to work in all of the browsers, some of them you have to add the prefix in front of whatever that standard normal value is supposed to be in order to get it to work in that browser. Now, just within the past three months or so, I'm tending to find that I don't need to use nearly as many of these prefixes as I used to. So it's always good to test it without the prefixes in the browsers you're going to use and see if you still need it. Literally from one week to the next, I've been able to drop some of these prefixes from some of the CSS3 properties. Since CSS3 is not a true standard and there is no set date as to when it will become one, what we have to do is go by browser support for these properties. Now notice the gradient is created using the background image property. And down in this area, I have a rather interesting one. 
This is dash MS dash filter. Much older versions of Microsoft took all of this stuff in order to create the drop shadow. Let me close this up. The reason our old version of Internet Explorer is adding the drop shadow, it's actually the box shadow property. And this one is made for Firefox. This one is made for WebKit is Google Chrome or Safari. Here is the older version. So this is Firefox 4.0 plus, but this one is for really old Microsoft Internet Explorer browsers. And you can see that it's working. My drop shadow is being pulled in. So if you add this one to your listing of properties, you can get that drop shadow pulled in. You won't get the rounded corners or the gradients in those really old versions, but you will be able to add a drop shadow. But those are what's known as proprietary prefixes, and some of the CSS3 properties do require them. So if something isn't working as the basic property in CSS3, add the prefix for that specific browser and see if that takes care of getting it working for you. I'm tending to find I need this less and less, but I wanted to make you aware of this just in case you're working in older versions. So the proprietary prefixes start with the dash, end with the dash, and it's O for Opera, Moz for Firefox, WebKit for Safari or Chrome, and MS for Microsoft Internet Explorer. So that's just a brief overview of proprietary prefixes in CSS, specifically for CSS3 properties that still need it. Eventually, we won't need to be doing any of that. The browsers will maintain full support. But up until then, I wanted to make you aware of what these mean in the code, and it is something you need to be made aware of so that you can get these working in as many browsers as possible. But that is the CSS3 proprietary prefixes and what they look like within the code.